So it strikes me that both from a commercial point of view and from a product point of view, the superpower that got you to that C-suite role in the first place is actually going to hold you back when you make that leap further up, right? It can actually, because you, not that you necessarily are, but you've got one attempt and one, one way of doing business that's either very process for engineering led or very maker led or very commercially led, just about sales and convincing and engaging and all those things. But those things don't work when you get to that CEO level. They can't right. work in quite the same way. They might work with part of the business, but that actually they'll actively cause opposite problems in the other part of the business if they're not under check. So you need to, in essence, open your mind to new ways of being and thinking to deal right. with different elements of the business who, who aren't built the same way as you, who aren't got the same set of experiences as you, and knowing that your usual tricks won't work. That's right. And, and it's, it's easy to be dismissive, to mm. say, my experience is that all of those engineering folks are lazy and don't want to do stuff and just want to tinker with their toys. Yeah. Um, and if you bring that forward as a CEO, uh, it's so toxic. So it's an emotional step back. It's a language step back to say, this is different than the kind of interaction that I was having before. And, and I think it's tremendously hard. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of somebody who's been a CEO for the third time because I figure that they've made all these mistakes on outings one and two. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. Yeah, they have. And I think that's interesting the way you talk about it there as well. 